Hey, it's Mike over at FisherAssOff.com and today what we're talking about is fishing for snook with pinfish. Now, pinfish are a weird fish. Um, they're always going to head down. So that's the problem with fishing with them because uh, you know, if you, if you fish with them on the grass flats, for instance, and you throw them out there, they're immediately going to get all tangled up in the, uh, in the seagrass or whatever if you give them that distance. Now fish can still find them. I mean, you can pitch a pinfish out there just because you got a hole in them from your hook and the predators can smell them, you know, redfish, snook, whatever, you, whatever you're going for out there. But um, I like to keep them out of the weeds as best as possible. And there's a lot of different scenarios of fish, fishing with pinfish for, for snook that I'm going to talk about. Uh, but just got to remember, they will always head straight down. You know, like a mullet, they tend to stay right on top of the water, right on top of the water. Especially if you tail hook them, they stay right on top of the water. But a pinfish, boom, straight down. So that's, that's what we're going to cover today. So when you're fishing for snook, using pinfish in, the, in an inlet or something, I like the Jupiter rig. Okay, now croaker works better than pinfish usually in an inlet and mullet's a good one too, but any, any of those three are great for using a Jupiter rig. And all a Jupiter rig is, you got your hook, so your pinfish is right there on the hook. Got about 18 inches of, of your leader, and then you got a barrel swivel. I over exaggerated the size of the barrel swivel. So you can see it's a barrel swivel. So there's 18 inches between your barrel, first barrel swivel and the hook. And then you have tied to this end of the barrel swivel, six inches of leader in between these two barrel swivels, and then you put whatever weight you're gonna need that's appropriate for the tide and the depth of whatever inlet you're fishing in or whatever. I mean, it doesn't have to be an inlet. It could be any deep channel with current where there's snook. But, uh, you know, so say three ounces because that's, I guess, pretty standard if you had a decent current in an inlet. So three ounces. So 18 inches from the barrel swivel to there and then six inches between your two barrel swivels where your weight is and then this is obviously tied to your fishing pole. But it's a great way. What it likes to do is just kind of roll along the bottom. Uh, just, it just works. Try it. You know, a lot of people just have a knocker rig of some sort, but I'm telling you, that is a great way to fish an inlet or any deep channel with current uh, with any of these live baits, spinfish, mullet, broker, um, you know, with, with a lot of current and, and some depth. So just go ahead and give it a go. Uh, a great way to fish pinfish because they're very hardy fish so you can just kind of leave them in the bucket and when you see a snook you can just pitch to them if you can see the snook before they see you and just pitch a pinfish up to it. That works great as long as again there's not areas for them to wrap up in because as soon as you pitch them, as soon as they hit the water they go straight down. So is, if it's on a mud flat where there's not a lot of place for them to hide or an open sandbar is another good one. Uh, where there's snook cruising that sandbar, you know, you can just free line them because they really don't have anywhere to hide. They're like, ah, and they can't <laughs> hide in the bushes. So the snook are going to see them and, and eat them. So it's a great place to fish for them is if you can find that scenario. But I use a bobber a lot with a pinfish. Pinfish are great for tarpon too uh, and snook. And I almost always use a bobber with a pinfish just because of their just evolutionary ways they always swim straight down so if i'm fishing in grass flats i want to uh, have enough length in there say it's four feet of water well i might have three and a half feet of leader between the bobber and the pinfish and just float it so it's like this high above the grass flats especially if there's potholes the sandy potholes because a lot of times those snook will be hiding right next to those sandy potholes waiting for something to come in not just snook, all the predators that are out there. So it's a great place to, to find them. Another good one is a seawall. And I mean just a straight seawall, not necessarily with rocks there. Those straight down seawalls, cement seawalls, you just pitch your uh, pinfish up against it and let the current just take it. It's going to be swimming and the waves will have it bouncing a little bit. And it'll just be going like this right next to all those snook. But make sure it's coming from up current because the snook are 
nine times out of ten going to be facing into the current waiting for bait to come to them. So that's a great way to fish these. And another great place is docks. So again, just pitch it to where the tide can take it to where the snook are. So a lot of times if I'm in a kayak, I'll be up current and I'll just kind of put the bobber out there with the pinfish and let the current take it to where I want it, and then I stop it just short of the dock so it can't wrap around the posts and do all the stuff that pinfish do. Uh, and it's just a great way, it's a great presentation. And you're usually going to use at least three feet a liter with something like that with the bobber because the bobbers often do scare away uh, some of the spookier snook that are going to be around. So give it at least three feet, maybe even four. And and that's that's how I fish with pinfish anyways. So that's it. I really just want to cover uh, snook fishing with, with a live pinfish today and just the different ways and a few different scenarios on how to use them. Uh, so that's it. So until next time, we'll see you then. All right. Bye-bye.